Bob Stoops. Thank you. Lieutenant Governor, appreciate it. Back, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. You know what, though? That's not good enough. Give it up for the governor of Alabama. Give it up for the Rust Belt Wrangler, Bob Stoops. Right, Come appreciate on. It. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you for that kind introduction. Maybe a hair too long for my taste, but you were awesome. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And, uh, and your reasons why I stepped away, very short list. That, there was a lot more than that. But, but, but uh, sure, I, I, I was pleased to have more time mentally and everything with my family. Um, I want to, my respects to Tim and Liz, your entire team. Um, the absolute best uh, what you're doing I don't know that I've ever been involved in a better cause seriously it, it is the absolute best what you're doing for people um, and the Oklahoma uh, City Police Athletic League and all of you coaches God bless you you are the best I'm the son of a high school teacher and coach uh, my father you know never made a bit of money taught at a private school so he had no retirement he never, he wouldn't do what I'm doing for all the money in the world. He wouldn't even have a day to do with it. And he wouldn't trade a day of his life for what he did. So my respects to you and what you're doing. You're the best. God bless you. And uh, thank you for what you're doing. Um, uh, Dan, Dan Tyrus also teaming, uh, teaming with Tim and Liz and the Fields of Futures, what he's doing. Wow. Uh, you you got to give it to him. That is just incredible. I heard all of that. I, I didn't realize it. I know I probably heard it yesterday at the luncheon, but first thing I said is I asked Tim. He's right next to me. I said, can I get his number? I want to call him tomorrow. You talk about a, a special guy to do what he's doing. So anyway, so it's great to be here, Kelly, to give your time, Kelly Ogle, to be here, and uh, love it. Just want to pay my respects before I sit down and get interviewed by Mr. Clark Stroud is the dean of our students. Uh, the Dean of Students, um, at, what, what, what's your official title, Clark? I, I, I'm the Vice President of Student yeah, Affairs. Yeah, see, I knew I'd for, forget yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Vice President of Student Affairs. And uh, been there for 18 years, 17, or 18, 18. years. 18 years. Yeah. I got a, about, I, I had a year on you? You had a year on, yeah, yeah, you did. Okay, so anyway, let's have some fun. Let's Clark's do. Clark's going to interview me, and uh, appreciate everyone being here today. Absolutely. Tonight. Well, and what's fantastic is, uh, you know, we're here tonight to honor these fantastic coaches that have done so much. And I think, you know, you touched on a little bit with your father, but talk to, to all of us a little bit about what got you into coaching. Uh, I don't think there was an option for me, meaning I grew up with a, a, a high school teacher coach who all, uh, he, he, I was at the ball field or the uh, football field every day. Uh, our brothers, my, even my sisters were allowed to come. They didn't come. And by the way, I've I'm one of six kids, so uh, my th all, all three of my brothers are all coaches, and my sisters, I have two of them, they, neither of them married a coach, so that tells you something. <laughs> but we were on a football field every day, in the locker room, hanging around the coaches. They were major influence on us, great, great people. Um, in the winter, I was at a, I, my dad uh, refereed, didn't make any money, so he had a referee all weekend to make some side money. He score kept the, the high school basketball. So I was uh, basketball games. So we were, where was I all winter? I was on a basketball court. He played baseball his entire life. I lost my dad young at 54, but up to the day he died, he was still playing fast pitch softball. So all I grew up with, we were bad boys. I was at a, I was at a ball diamond all summer or the neighborhood kids. We would, Mr. Stoops was playing down the block. We had a ballpark. We'd all Ten of us go walk down and we'd shag the balls. We'd be finding the balls that were foul balls. And so I was never anywhere but on a, a field. So I, people have asked me, uh, you know, those TV interviews, what, if you weren't a coach, what would you be? And I go, I'd be a coach somewhere. I might not, I never dreamed I'd be the head coach at Oklahoma. I never got into it just for that reason. I loved what I did. It's like even before I became the head coach, it's like I never worked a day of my life. I loved what I did. I was on a ball field. I, it was like not work. It's what I, it's what I knew. 
Well, but, but not to say I couldn't do business. I have a marketing degree, so anybody out there now that I'm unemployed. And, so. and you've got a master's, too. <laughs> no, I got halfway through a master's. Halfway. I never completed it. All right, well, I'll give it to you here tonight. But, you know, one of the themes we've heard tonight, we've heard Tim talk about it and different speakers that are up here, the life lessons learned um, and building character. Can you talk a little bit about building character um, on the athletic field and how that translates into the classroom and the family life? And you know. I don't think there's a better place to find, um, you know, partnerships, uh, friendships, respecting others, learning. There, there's not a more diverse locker room than being in a football locker room, or I'm sure every locker room. Everybody's different. You learn to respect everybody. You, you, you learn to become friends with people you never thought you would and close friends. Uh, there's not a better uh, place to, to get positive reinforcement, to have someone put their arm around you, and, and tell you what a great job you did. What's, that's all a child wants, uh, uh, some reward, some, you know, something positive. And, and let's face it, there's so many that, in, in so many circumstances, that may not get it much. And, and to, to someone to see them every day and let them know they care about them, and I want to make you better today, ask them, care about you, how'd you do in school today? Were you on time? You know, did, how'd you do on your test? Everything, and, and, and it's that way even at our level. I, I see my guys. I, I get a class checklist every morning. I, I, my guys are stretching, all 120 of them. Kick them in the toe while he's on the ground. I heard you were late for class. How come? Why? Can you get there early, early enough tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, coach, I will. It's as simple as that, but someone, they know somebody cares about them and wants them to do well, and then the positive reinforcement. There's nothing like it, and... Uh, I, I, I remember reading, and you think about it, I get, I'd be around my guys, I got 120, as I said, every single day. And I have 10 other coaches every single day. We, we, we will influence more teenagers' lives in one year than most people will their entire life. Correct? Same thing with these, these guys down here. They got 50 guys on their team, or, or 40. And they, they, for 40, you know, it's just here you go. It's, it's, you know, for three years, they got 120 kids that they've totally influenced. And, and, and how many of you, and I'm not, hey, you got great jobs, business people, you, but you're not around teenagers at this age every single day. And, and, and these guys who give their time and even the volunteers who give their time to relate to these people, you couldn't have a better, uh, you couldn't. You, you can't influence young people more than that, and uh, and it's a it's a credit to all the the ones out here that are doing it. And I, we look at it. I'll promise you, I'm not the only guy. All us coaches, we look at it as our job to develop people and young men, not just football players. That is absolutely what we intend to do when we're with them every single day. Well, and and so getting to this point, I know one of the questions that people ask me about you or the influences on your life, whether it's coaching personally, who are some of those people that have had an oh. influence on you? Oh, it's all my coaches, uh, my parents, of course. Um, I, I I said it on the radio earlier today. My two of my favorite coaches I ever had were my seventh and eighth grade, my football coach Don McLeod, and my seventh eighth grade basketball coach Ralph Ralph Sandin. Um, they're, they're the best. Uh, I mean, he, uh, Coach McLeod has passed. I follow uh, Coach Sandine on Facebook. How's that? That yeah, tells you right there. He, Bob's on Facebook. My point, no, I just follow people. Oh, I don't, okay. I don't have right. anything on don't, it. Don't, don't try friending him. Okay? I follow, I follow okay. like 10 people, some friends, <laughs> but Coach Sandine's one of those 10. <laughs> but point being, um, they're, they're, they're a couple of my favorite coaches I've ever had. But all, all of my coaches and, and, uh, People like that have been major, major influences on my life. What about professionally? Who are some people? Well, uh, you know, I've talked a lot. I, I played for Hayden Fry, uh, one of the legends in, in college football, um, the, one of the best. Uh, and I had a host of great assistant coaches there that have all probably six, seven, eight of them became head coaches, which tells you the quality of assistant coaches I came up under. And then uh, Steve Spurrier was a major. Uh, he and uh, Bill Snyder. Bill Snyder I was with at Kansas State. And probably the guy I was most like and uh, influenced by was uh, Steve Spurrier. 
was a, remains a very close, great friend of mine. I thought our personalities maybe than the other people I was around were more closely related. And uh, I just gravitated more to them. And, uh, you know, most everything I brought here when I started at Oklahoma, I copied from our blueprint with what we were doing uh, at Florida at the time. And, and uh, just a, a real amazing, amazing person. What people don't, you see that persona in the media and on TV, but a great family man. Uh, very loyal, dedicated to people he cares about, and uh, and uh, anyway, and uh, the most, which this won't be a surprise to anybody, the most confident and and sure of himself individual I've ever been around. <laughs> That's no surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so so in talking about your seventh and eighth grade coaches and these these different coaches that have had an impact on your life, how would you like to be remembered by? by your players. I know Trent Smith and Wes Sims, I saw them out there. You've got a couple of former players here tonight, but how would you like them to, to remember you? I guess uh, more than anything is a, a, a coach that cared about them, that, that invested in them, developed them the best I could, cared about them individually, um, and, and helped them, uh, helped them achieve. Um, you know, hopefully brought them to, you know, to spaces and places they wouldn't have been on their own, you know, just to develop them uh, not only as people, but as students, but uh, as athletes too. There's a, let's face it, in life, I don't know that anything you hold dearer than a sense of accomplishment, something you fought for, strived for, worked for, and then to, to have it come true and have success. Let's face if someone can't hand you that, right, privilege or not, someone can't hand you something that you hold that close to you. And when you've accomplished something that you never thought maybe you would or, wow, look what this ended up being, you know, that this experience uh, that, you know, it's, it's something someone can't give to you. And, and that's what, you know, the, those guys, we had great teams at that time, and, and hopefully they have a sense of that kind of accomplishment that, that is uncommon. What are, um, with, especially with the coaches out there, we've recognized a few of them here tonight, Coach. What are some words of wisdom that you have for some of our coaches out there? Uh, they're, they're, I'm sure they're doing it. First and foremost, care for your guys, your players, your, your guys and girls, whoever you're inspiring, coaching. Um, you, you can't be close enough to them. Get your arm around them. Talk to them about their personal lives. Um, it's, it's invaluable and you have to be connected to your to your to your players uh, first and foremost, and then uh, be positive as much as you can. I'm not saying you neglect what isn't correct; it needs to be corrected, it needs to be pointed out, but do so as much as you can in a positive manner, and um, and and have high expectations. I, I think sometimes too, you know, don't be afraid to challenge. You know, to to challenge to push people and. And then to push them for more. So one of the things that you did when you came to the University of Oklahoma is you set up your own foundation, the, the Bob Stoops Champions Foundation. And um, one of the commitments that you made a couple of years ago was to Fields and Futures. Would you talk ab about why you're all in on Fields and Futures and, and what it what you've seen it do, but but I mean, what what why was it important for the champion? I mean, you, with the Champions Foundation could give to any charity in, in the entire state, and you chose to, to support Fields and Futures. What, was, what were you thinking? I, I believe in giving youth, teenagers, the opportunity to compete at, at any sport. Men and women, boys and girls need the opportunity to challenge themselves, to be on a field, and to be on a good field. It, it, there's something about it that changes your as you as you saw in the films, your your perspective and your your self worth, and then and then um, you know to have the opportunity to compete. Uh, to me, there there's nothing like competition, especially at a young age, to learn about yourself, to be competitive, to to know you know the challenges, to handle stress, to handle the fear, to learn to 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 look to be faithful and positive and. I can do this, you grow. Uh, to me, if you challenge yourself that way, there's, it's something that's really spiritual to find yourself in a competitive environment to succeed. 
And, there, and listen, you're not always going to be successful. No one is. There's value in failure. But to have tried and to have had the chance to, to push yourself to learn, to grow, to be around teammates, be around positive coaches and role models, uh, you know, all of that is valuable. And, and then to learn the internal part of yourself of, of how you handle competition. It, and to me, it transcends into adulthood, uh, it, being challenged in a classroom, being competitive in a classroom, being challenged in the workplace. You're not always going to be the best. Find a way to do the best you can and then keep pushing for more. And, and to me, internally, there's a lot to be learned there. And, and it shouldn't be minimized. I have one more question for you, Coach. Okay, fine. We've already had a federal investigator uh, kind of surmise, but <laughs> in your own words, why now? I mean, yeah. why now and what's next for you? Uh, I'm sure unsure what's next. Why now? I think people now have seen, has anyone seen all the coaching turmoil that's happened in the last month? Was have like we, have we had dollars? any? Nope. So maybe, maybe I was, and Joe Castiglione, and President Boren, all of us that, Maybe June 7th was a pretty cool spot to be in, yep. to handle it, a lot of things. Um, I knew I never wanted to grow old uh, being in this, in, in what I was doing. Um, I knew uh, a couple, several things. I knew Lincoln Riley was a, a, not just a capable, uh, going to be a star in this business. So I knew it would be in great hands. And I, I know as Joe Castiglione and President Boren were speaking to, to Lincoln through that time, they realized it as well. I knew we had a strong character and a strong team and a mature team that would handle it. And, um, and, and they have, and I knew once they sat back and thought, well, this is okay. We're all still here. He doesn't play. <laughs> all our coaches are still here. <laughs> we're all our coaches are still here. They have a lot of confidence and faith in coach Riley. I said, all right, this is all right once they stepped back and realized it. I knew too, I felt strongly that this would empower Coach Riley to move forward, that nothing's gonna change here. We're gonna always be that team that's gonna win big 12s and compete for national championships. And I knew the timing was correct in that they had not just the summer, but the fall to keep recruiting for December 20th and beyond that this will smooth over and as we win, they're all going to see nothing's changed. Yeah. And so all of it together, I just felt it was the correct and right moment. And uh, it seems like it's, it's come that way. And I would say this, uh, play, and I've gotten credit that, oh, he's, he's left them a, a great, you know, a championship type team. No one has a Final Four team in June. I'll promise you that. Clemson didn't, Alabama didn't, Georgia didn't, Oklahoma didn't. Lincoln has developed that along with the other coaches and brought it to fruition by their work and how they've done it. And, and, and he deserves that credit for bringing that because it's not easy. You people have hiccups all over the place and, and uh, he, he's kept the team focused and, and improving week to week to get us to that position. So um, fortunately for, for ever, Oklahoma fans, our program, all of us, it's, it's worked out in a great way. Now we just got it, we're gonna win two more. And you got to see Drake and Isaac play every every That's week. right. That's right. How about that? Right there. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Bob Stoops. All right. <laughs>